I don't like the word domain. I banned its use in the company. What do you call it then? A website name, but this isn't really about the names of websites either, to be honest. What it's about? From a technical and financial point of view, this is about information. Where does it exist? Nowhere. This information is in me, it's in you, it's elsewhere. I wanted to create a sort of bottle where you can collect endless stories related to one art object. Each object should have its own website. And then I started digging deeper and found that every single website has a definitive provenance. Mm -hmm. This is conditioned through technology. You can't buy a website without identifying yourself. And when a website passes from one person to another, it continues to be fixed to its owner. This makes it a digital real estate. As operators of the domain zone, we're within our rights to introduce certain technological additions. We've added extra fields that detail not only the owner, but also the object that this website is dedicated to. Mm -hmm. We took the object ID, the Getty Foundation standard used by Interpol, UNESCO, the Louvre, and all major art institutions. Mm -hmm. And added it to the domain's special fields. Ours is the only domain zone in the world that is able to capture information about art objects. So, every work of art uh, should have its own website? Yes, if the work is of value. In theory, then, this is how cataloging an art collection at a museum should be like. Yes. In the future, will this system somehow simplify art market transactions? Uh, of course. It introduces a self-regulatory mechanism. It's no secret that provenance records are full of fakes and misuses. One can forge certificates as well as art objects themselves. We offer a universal technical solution where the owner or author registered with a verified ID says this is what this object is. The record is stored forever. If it is later discovered that it was a fake, the author has implicated themselves by leaving evidence. In the future, it will make sense for buyers to only purchase objects that hold these kind of certificates. You touched on the idea that the digital environment will eventually come to be so perfect that the object themselves will no longer be needed. You've chosen to ask this question at an apt time. What can we see here? What can we see? These are all copies. Roman sculptures are mostly copies of Greek sculptures. And if we didn't have these copies, then we'd have no idea about the existence of these sculptures. Based on this, we can draw a simple conclusion. The existence of copies can help preserve and consequently supply us with culture. I believe that art objects will inevitably and completely migrate to the digital realm. Moreover, with the emergence of distributed databases, it's possible to make digital objects unique. A digital object can become even more unique than the physical one. How is that possible? It's the advantage of a distributed database. You can't copy the blockchain entity. It can only be single. If you made a scan of a sculpture and attached a blockchain mark to it, the digital image becomes the only one that's unique. You can scan a digital object several times, but the original digital scan 
cannot be copied. Being aware of the statistics of how cultural heritage disappears before our eyes, I now understand that the most fitting way to preserve everything that surrounds us is through digitalization. These digital images should be of the highest quality, unique in their kind and should not turn into digital garbage, nor into an infinite number of bad copies. Imagine approaching this very icon in 50 years and seeing a hologram with an inscription saying that the museum and indeed all of humanity is indebted to, for example, Anaman Guide, who made a donation that in turn made it possible to digitize this very art object. If you make this kind of donation, you become a lifelong donor of this piece of art. What is the point of making digital molds or copies? The expression digital mold seems to me more precise. A recent example is the city of Palmyra, blown up by deranged people. By and large, this cultural treasure is completely lost because it didn't have any digital molds. And the parts that did have digital molds will help to restore everything very quickly. Is it really possible that they will restore it? The bits that were properly digitized would even let you perform a so-called digital restoration. You have to estimate how it will be executed, how much effort one will need to expend and what resources would be needed. Archaeologists from the Russian Academy of Sciences already work on such projects. But, unfortunately, in Palmyra, only a very small part was digitized. Creating molds of all cultural heritage objects would help to preserve unique items that are simply fading. Palmyra is a monumental example, but there are, for example, graphics, watercolors that simply fade on their own, or we just lose them. The Pushkin Museum constitutes of almost 400,000 graphic works, and creating these digital copies is necessary if we want to preserve them.